Hi, welcome to another episode as we look at Jesus's temptation in the wilderness. And I'm calling this one, I want to say, I want to see if you can say it five times fast, Temple Temptations of Testing. Temple Temptations of Testing. That's what we're going to look at today. Uh, we'll continue to look at Matthew 4. And now I'm going to read to you verses 5 through 7 to see how Jesus was tempted in the wilderness this time. All right, so this time, the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, again, we're, we're looking at our temple temptations of testing um, as we see how Jesus was tempted. And this time, um, Satan raises the stakes. Uh, the devil says, you know what? I could take you to the highest point. You could throw yourself down and still angels would come and save you. There is nothing you couldn't do that God would provide for you, that God wouldn't save you, um, that God wouldn't come to rescue you if you asked. You can just use that, that power, you use your divinity, and, and God will preserve you. Um, so the devil is really pushing at every angle for Jesus now. He's just, uh, and, you know, been baptized, just announced his public ministry. And Jesus, and, and the Satan's like, Jesus, you can do anything you want with this. Imagine the power you could wield, the things you could do. He's really trying to wow him. Before it was just about turning stones to bread so he could eat. Now it's about wowing. Now it's about power. Now it's about uh, seeing all that his divinity can do. What can the power of God do? Now, Satan's not saying anything that isn't true. This is truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus could do any and all of these things that Jesus wishes to do. But if he did it, would it be the right thing? And no, it would be, it would be twi taking that, tr that, uh, that truth and twisting it to a lie. Because mm -hmm. it's not about doing these things to wield power and just to do them for the sake of doing them. All of that would be wrong. That is not the point um, that, that we're at at this point. And so this passage references Deuteronomy 6, 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just as uh, you know, Satan, who, who apparently picks up the cue uh, that, that we're going to be using scripture here, so, you know, Satan goes to uh, Psalm 91 and says, this is what's written. So you can do that. This is the truth uh, that, that, that this, is, this is what the Bible says. And, and Jesus says, you know, it also says, it also says that you should not put the Lord your God to the test. Once again, Jesus is going back to Deuteronomy. Jesus is going to that place where uh, we've, you know, we've just about come through the wilderness and we're about to the promised land, but we need to, to remember some things. Now, this specifically uh, points back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse uh, 16, which says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. As you tested him at Massa. Now, now you may remember uh, that there was a place that the Israelites came to, we studied, uh, called Massa and Meribah. That's the place where Moses struck the rock and the water flowed out. Uh, and that, those names, Masa and Meribah, I mean, quarreling and testing because the people put God to the test there. That's exactly what Moses tells them. He said, why do you put God to the test? And the test, according to uh, Exodus, is, uh, if you want to go back and look at this, this is in Exodus 17. The test, according to Exodus 17, is, is God among us or not? Is God here among us or not? Is, is, we, we know that we've already received the manna, but now we have need of water, and is God here among us or not? Can God continue to provide? And so, that's the question. Is God among us or not? That's the test that the people put God to. Now, in Jesus, we see that, that Jesus has no doubt the answer to that question. The answer to that question is yes, God is here. And the question is, what will we see later in Jesus's ministry? Again, our temple temptation of testing um, happens while Jesus is in the wilderness in his time of testing. 
um, as he's figuring out how he's going to take this ministry public, how he's going to get the message out to the people, um, how he's going to do what God intended him to do on earth. Um, but he knows where he's going to end up. He's going to end up um, at Gethsemane, at the cross. He's going to end up with the ultimate test. We thought the test in the wilderness was a big one. You know, if I if you threw yourself down from the tight of this temple, you know angels will swoop you up and 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 keep you safe. Um, God will not let you perish is really what Satan is tempting him with. You can enjoy whatever power and, and stuff you want right here on earth. Just do it. Just have fun. But Jesus knows it's not about fun. Um, this is about how he will save the people. And he knows that the stakes are only going to get higher at the end of the ministry. What we look forward to in looking at next week with Holy Week and what we will walk through and, and remember as, a, as an important cornerstone of our faith is that the stakes only get higher as Jesus goes to the cross. And Jesus is saying that I don't need a dramatic display. I don't need to throw myself off the top of the temple. I don't need to be on the cross and then suddenly break free and, and say, I don't need the people to put me to death. Jesus does not need the drama in order to tell the people the message that God is sending, to say that I've come to save you from your sins, that I am sacrificed for you. The greatest sacrifice ever to save for our sins so that we might have forgiveness, that we might have the ultimate thing that says, yes, God is here. God is among us. God cares. God listens. God loves us. God would do anything for us. Without that gesture, how would we know? So this is all looking forward to what we will walk through next week with Holy Week. The ultimate test. The ultimate thing. Satan is pushing all the right buttons, but Jesus knows the right answers. Um, knowing that God would save him if he asked, but that's not the point. There needs to be sacrifice. There needs to be the ultimate giving. And Jesus doesn't need a dramatic display um, before the people to say that that's what God's power is about. Mm -hmm. God's power is about God's love for his people and God's love even for a disobedient people. Think about that as you're ending your time of Lent, going through whatever thing that you're examining in your relationship with God, whatever um, thing you're trying to take on, whatever thing you're trying to sacrifice yourself. What is it pointing you to in your life? There is something for you to learn in that. Um, think, keep thinking through it. There's more to, to know. And um, Easter's right around the corner, so the joy of Easter is coming, we promise people. <laughs> um, and again, don't forget, um, as we are finishing up this week, we want to hear from your comments, and we'll do a special episode next week to answer any and all questions. All right, we'll see you later.